Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Kentucky Small Business Development Center's weekly webinar. I'm Dave Etkin. I'm the director of the SPD Center in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm glad you're with me today. So if it's your first time joining me, welcome. If it's your 100th time joining, thank you for joining again. It's always good to see everybody. Um, I see that a lot of folks are just starting to come in and get settled. So I'll give everyone a minute to join. And while we do, I'd like to share a little bit of information about the Kentucky Small Business Development Center program. The Kentucky Small Business Development Center is the only statewide nationally accredited program that provides entrepreneurial and business development services to assist Kentucky's entrepreneurs at every stage of their business life cycle. For almost 40 years, the Kentucky SBDC has assisted emerging and growing businesses by providing the professional expertise, tools, and information necessary to make sound business decisions in a complex and ever-changing marketplace. And you know what? We do this at no cost to our clients, thanks to the U.S. Small Business Administration, the University of Kentucky, as well as regional universities, colleges, and local economic, de economic development agencies. We're also part of the national network, America's SBDC, with over 1,000 centers across the nation. If you'd like to learn more about the Kentucky SBDC, visit us at KentuckySBDC.com. There you'll find the additional resources to help start, fund, and grow your business. But if you'd like to request personal assistance, shoot us an email at info at KentuckySBDC.com or call at 1-888-475-7232. Uh, if you look at the bottom of your screen there, uh, if you don't see anything, but you'll hover down there with your cursor, the, uh, a toolbar will pop up and you'll see the little chat button there. Just uh, if you wouldn't mind, just, uh, just to make sure everything's working, you can hear me. Uh, just type your name in the chat, say hello, and tell me where you're watching from. It's always cool to see where everybody's at. We get folks from all over the world. Sometimes it's uh, it's pretty fun to see what everybody's up to. So we we'll just take a second and say hello. There's Margaret Weathers. Hey, Margaret, how are you? Um, there's Dave from Shelbyville. Nice to see you, Dave. And Jackie, Maryland. All right. Hey, Janice. Jennifer, great to see you. Mona, always good to see you on. Phyllis, yeah. Great. Oh yeah, we got tons of people joining today. Uh, lots of folks from Louisville, but all over the place. Great. Yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. Little Rock, well, Jay from Little Rock. Actually, uh, Zach Himes, our speaker today with Waco Media is actually uh, joining us from Fayetteville, Arkansas. So you guys are neighbors and since you're from Arkansas, I'm sure you know each other well and hang out a lot. So. Great to get you guys connected. Um, so just a little reminder, I again, I'm Dave Atkin. I'm the director here at the Louisville Center of the Kentucky Small Business Development Center Network. And uh, we're just one of 17 centers all across the uh, state of Kentucky. And I know you're gonna ask this question, but yes, we will send you a recording of this today, this afternoon. So you can watch it over and over again. So got a great guest today, Zach Himes, who is with Waco Media, again, from Fayetteville, Arkansas. And um, Zach is a specialist at, um, in all digital media. He is uh, a great expert and resource uh, to kind of help small businesses um, focus their, you know, their, their strategy and, uh, and all things digital and, and move your business forward. We we get so many people requesting information on, on marketing strategies and Zach was such a great, great resource and I'm glad you're here to, to join in and share with us, Zach. Zach. So with that, I think I'm just gonna hand it off to you and let's just jump right in and, and uh, get started. Awesome, first off, thanks for having me, David. I'm really happy to be here and getting to kind of talk about some strategy today. Um, but like you saw on the invite, we are going to talk a lot today about how to create a killer digital marketing strategy. Um, some alternative captions we thought about was how to meet customers in their customer journey. We thought about talking about a lot of different things, but we kind of landed on this topic and we're going to kind of dive into it. I'm going to warn you, I'm going to throw a lot of information at you today. Um, but at the end, I will give a link where you can reach out to me. We can connect. We can talk about this a little bit further. So let's jump in. So before we get too far into it, I want to really explain what is digital marketing. So we can't really know 
what we're talking about without having a definition. So I went and I did what any person would do. And I hopped online and said, okay, what is digital marketing? Somebody give me a definition that they have. And so the def definition that we got here said digital marketing, also called online marketing, is the promotion of brands to connect with potential customers using the internet and other forms of digital communication. This includes not only email, social media, and web-based advertising, but also text and multimedia messages as a marketing channel. So that's a fancy definition of it. Long story short, or anytime you are outreaching to customers or trying to get customers to come to you online, that's digital marketing. You do something digital, that's digital marketing. Um, our team, I work with a team called Flypaper. You can see our, our brand there in the corner. We really focus on helping businesses understand digital marketing and understanding the strategies that you can use to help amplify your digital marketing. So what's the purpose of digital marketing? So I put this slide in here and you're going to notice that a lot throughout here I use bullet point. This is the one exception to the bullet point because I said it I'm a marketing person. I spent a lot of time in marketing and one of the things that I realize is all the time marketing people like me want to go to brand recognition brand loyalty creating a loyal customer base having a cool brand making people think we're cool as the reasons of why we do marketing which are all good things and all would fall on a list somewhere as you can see recognition and loyalty fall in there in my list but number one is generating revenue because at the end of the day when we have revenue as a business we can then take more chances we can take more opportunities to really refine our strategy and we can put some of that back into the marketing that we're going to do so number one would be generating revenue um, i say it all the time once you generate revenue freedom comes with revenue so once you get the revenue you can take some chances you can try a different marketing channel that maybe you didn't use in the past and so generating revenue would be number one number two would be creating brand recognition so this is where you want to make sure people recognize who you are we all could probably pick a brand and say, you know what, I see that brand all the time. Maybe it's a local, a local Louisville business. Maybe it's for me for a long time, it was Sonic because I don't know if you had this experience, but I couldn't stop seeing Sonic commercials for a while. It was always the guys in the car. And it was like, I would always think about Sonic. And it would remind me of that every time I drove past the Sonic, I'd think about the commercials because they had brand recognition from consistently being out there. And the last one is creating brand loyalty. So once you have recognition and once you have revenue, New, you can start creating loyalty. You can put into place loyalty programs. You can also understand your customers better so you can market to them where they are at. So those are our three purposes of marketing. Let's go in even deeper to look at what are some of the types of digital marketing. So there's two main types we're going to talk about today, and it's inbound marketing and outbound marketing. The way I like to think about this is inbound marketing is customers who come looking for you. So that's going to be things like blog articles, that's going to be videos, it's going to be web, web design, that's going to be a lot of various things, podcasts are another one that are kind of, we're seeing more and more businesses get into podcasting. And so inbound marketing is those customers coming to look for you, that's somebody who goes and does a search or goes and looks for a service or a product that you might offer, and then becomes a customer because of the content you've put out. Um, you're going to notice a trend on inbound marketing that it's a lot of times focused on the content. If you have good content, you're on a good path to doing good inbound marketing. Next up, we have outbound marketing. That's when you go looking for customers. That's going to be things like pay-per-click advertising, social media ads, display ads, and honestly, a lot of traditional advertising fell into this category where you went and you went to go look for your customers. You're doing it. You're trying to find out where they're at, and you're trying to target them based on what you know about your ideal customer. This is a method that we still see a lot of customers have a lot of effectiveness in, but it comes down to knowing your customers, having a good brand, and making sure you can target where they're at. Now, there are some that kind of fall in the middle or kind of in both categories. Those things could be email, because obviously, if you have somebody signing up for an email list that you do, they might be signing up for your email list and you're sending them emails, but that's kind of falls in inbound because they signed up, but you're also sending an outbound message to them. So it kind of can fall in both. Um, organic social is another one of those. So it could be where somebody just found you, but it also could be through targeting you did where somebody likes and shares your, your social posting or through boosted posts. So organic social is kind of one of those that falls in both as well. And then webinars like what we're doing here. So a webinar is a great place to have customers who are looking for something find you, but it also can kind of fall in like a gray area because you're also knowing who you're targeting in a webinar. You know what kind of webinars to go to. So it kind of falls a little bit in the middle. So today you're going to notice the theme and one of the things that I really want to help you kind of 
pull out of this today is that not understanding the customer journey is one of the biggest challenges businesses face. So we are fortunate to work with a lot of businesses throughout the Southeast United States. And one of the things that we've consistently seen is that not understanding the customer journey is one of the things that they just will just tank every piece of strategy you have. You need to understand what your customers are going through because then you can be better. So I'm not just going to say that quote. I'm going to give you an example. And to do so, I'm going to have to tell you a little bit more about me. So for me, I got married in 2020 during the worst parts of the pandemic. So if you want to hear horror stories of trying to plan a wedding during a pandemic, hit me up. I'd love to talk about it. But then after we got married, my wife and I decided we wanted to buy a house. Um, so we were looking also, bad time to buy a house, bad time to get married to pandemic, bad time to buy a house. You might be seeing a theme in my life. But the next thing we did is we bought that house. The house was built in 1967. Um, you can see here, this is our house. It's lovely. It is a great house, but it needed some work. It's built in 1967. There's a lot of original things that have not been updated since the 60s. And so there's a lot that we need to do. So we knew we needed work and we knew we needed a company to help us. So we said, OK, what are we going to do? How are we going to take care of this? Spoiler alert, we went to Google because we didn't know who to go to. We didn't have a full like network of people who had the services we were looking for. We went to Google and we searched it. And I want to talk a little bit about what we looked for. So the first thing that we cared about when we were looking for a business is, does that business show up online? That seems obvious, but it's the number one thing. If I don't know you exist and I go to search online and you don't show up, in my mind, you don't exist. So that's the biggest thing that we looked at is, are they actually there? And then even more so, are they there in a favorable, favorable position on a search engine? Do they show up in the first page? Do they show up in the first couple of results? We wanted to make sure that that business was present to us. Then once that happened, then we went into the website and we wanted to see, does that business look professional and credible? Do they have a website that makes sense? Does it look like they've done business before? Or is it a website that kind of looks like maybe I don't want these people to come do work in my house? So we wanted to make sure it was professional and credible. The next one was we wanted a business that made the process easy. So I don't know about you, but nothing will stress me out more than having a process that's really inefficient. I want an efficient pro process. I want to be able to get what I'm trying to get quickly, easily, and with communication throughout the process. And so we wanted to find somebody who made the process of getting the services we were looking for done easy. The next thing we wanted is a business that we'd seen before. And even if we hadn't seen before, we wanted to at least have heard about this business before. So that's where we were looking for people we had seen signs of. We rented a house before we bought and we lived in a new build neighborhood that had workers coming through all the time. There were construction signs, there were vans, there were trucks. We could see different brands. So we're like, who had we seen before? Who looked recognizable to us? And then the last thing we looked for is a business that had a history of following through. So this came from both us talking to people that had had a similar job done, maybe had used the same company, looking at testimonials, looking at reviews. We did a lot to make sure that company had a history of following through with what they said they were going to do. Nothing's worse than hiring somebody to do a job and not getting what you expect. So we wanted to make sure that that company was who we thought they were and were going to do good work. So after my research and after my experience, I realized that a great business should be present, they should be professional, they should be efficient, they should be visible in the community, and they should be dependable. But I'm not just going to leave you with business buzzwords here. I'm going to talk about some tips to help you do those things that I just talked about and be the business that I was looking for. So you might be asking, how do I make sure my business shows up? So the first thing, and you're going to notice a, a theme in a lot of things we talk about, is to invest in great content. Investing in great content is going to allow you to be a knowledge leader. It's going to allow you to delight your customers by giving them the information they're looking for. And it's also going to allow you to, as kind of a side effect, rank well on search engines, show up online because you have great content. So making sure you have that content. And now what I want to take a second to say is that if you don't feel confident writing content, there's a lot of people and places you can go to help write content. But you as a business owner, whatever business you're running, you know your business well. So whoever you go to, whatever you do, make sure you work in tandem with that person writing your content to make sure it sounds like your brand. 
to make sure it sounds professional. It sounds like the services and businesses that you can do. Make sure that you're investing in great content and great people to help you create that content. The next one is make the purpose of your site clear. So we've all been on a site before where you go there and you look at the site and you're like, what is the purpose of the site? What are they trying to get me to do? Now, in our case, what we were trying to do was get estimates. We were trying to get quotes of how the service was, how long it was going to take. When could they come out and do an estimate? How much was it going to cost? And so the goal for us was just to fill out a form, say, hey, we want a free estimate. And you would be amazed how many sites we went to that didn't make that step clear. They didn't show us how can we get an estimate? How can we go about this? Do we need to call you? Do we need to fill out a form? What do we need to do? So make the purpose clear. If your goal, like we talked about, the goal of marketing is to create revenue, you should try to get that customer information, get them to reach out with you to you as quick as possible. So then the next thing here is staying up to date with current best practices. So I know your business owners, I know that you guys are busy, you have a lot going on, but just staying up to date with what is going on in the world of digital marketing, staying up to date with what is Google's recent changes. You can, you probably heard it, you've probably through the grapevine or maybe directly, Google likes to change things. They like to change their algorithm. They like to do different things and make different things what they emphasize versus what was emphasized previously. So staying up to date with what is the current best practices, what things are search engines looking for, what are customers looking for on a website, staying up to date with those kind of things and making sure you put those changes into effect. And the last one here is to utilize a comprehensive marketing plan. So this is one that you would be amazed how many times we talk to somebody and they go, I do social media. I'm like, okay, awesome. Like, what else do you do? Like, oh, no, we do social media. And we ask, do you have a website? No, no, we do social media. And what we have to tell them is you need a little bit more of a comprehensive plan. You need to make sure you're covering more areas. Make sure you have a good website. Make sure you have some of those inbound methods we talked about. Make sure you have some of those outbound methods we talked about. Making sure you diversify your marketing plan will allow you to reach the most people and to reach them more often in more places where they're actually at. So the next question you might be asking is, how do I make sure my website looks professional? So this is one that if I could just take every person who ever built a website and inject something into their brain, it would be this. Keep it simple. So there's a there's a quote that Albert Einstein said that was if you can't explain it to a six year old, you don't really know it. Don't, don't really know it yourself. And so I would encourage you to make your website so simple and so easy to understand that a six-year-old could understand your product. Make sure that you keep it simple. Keep colors to a minimum. Don't have 50 different colors on your website. Make sure that your content is clear about what you're trying to, what you're trying to portray, what kind of services you have. Make sure things stay simple. Um, we see it over and over again where you go to a website, you go to a business, and it's like, boom, it's in your face and you see a million things at once. Um, we call those type of websites around here, the, the diner coffee table or the diner table websites. Those are the ones where you see like all the different ads for businesses on the diner table. That's not how your website should look. It should be simple. It should be cohesive. It should all look the same and be easy to understand. The next one is use high quality images. This is super self-explanatory, but making sure you have high quality images. Don't use outdated images. Make sure you're updating them to be more recent, to be taken of like a higher quality. Camera qualities change all the time. So make sure you have high quality images of both the work you do, the products you, you offer, and if possible, some of the team members that somebody might interact with. Having those photos of team members allow them to understand who they might be interacting with in their business. Next up is to keep a consistent look and feel. So we want to make sure that when we look at your website, we know this is this brand. This is, this is your brand. This is who you are. These are the colors you use. This is the logo you use, the font you use. Now, you have to also keep that look and feel consistent through everything you do in your business, whether that's business cards, whether that's email signatures, whether that's the gear that you wear out that has a logo on it, making sure that your brand and your business looks consistent and has that consistent look and feel so people can start to understand it. It can start to realize who you are, recognize your brand, and then you'll start having more people as you talk to them say, oh, I've heard of you before. I've seen you somewhere because you keep that look and feel consistent. Every time you do something that that's falls in line with your brand consistency, you have a check mark in the box of like 
having a brand loyalty. Now, every time you don't keep your consistency, you're taking away from potential loyalty that you could be gaining from, from customers. And the last one is understanding your brand's voice and using it. So every brand has a voice. It's going to sound different depending on who you are. You're going to have different people you're trying to target. Maybe you're trying to target people in a, a specific city, a specific area, and they talk a little bit different or they have different expectations from what your brand sounds like and what you post out online. Make sure you understand the brand's voice and then actually use it and use it consistently. Consistently. So making sure you have that brand and making sure you use it is going to be really important. So you might be asking, how do I make the process simple? Step one is use forms. So forms are the easiest way to have a small barrier to give some information and then get information back to a customer. So the one thing I would encourage you to understand, though, is the effort versus the reward. So understanding that the effort that you have to have to take as a customer, you ask your customers to take, needs to match the reward they get. So if you say, hey, fill out this form and we'll give you a free estimate, make sure that it matches the value that they found and find in that free estimate. Now, if you're giving away something special or giving $100 off or whatever it may be, you can ask for more information on a form. But if it's just simply a free estimate or we'll give you a quick quote or whatever it may be, that reward is smaller. Make sure your form matches that. Don't ask for too much information. Ask for enough to get that customer through the customer process, but don't ask for too much or else they may not fill out your form. Um, the next one is streamline processes. So you can always, as a business owner, look at your business and find somewhere in the process where it can be a little bit more efficient. It could be a little bit quicker. And what I encourage you to do is to, to do that. Take a second right now and think about your business process. Where are you consistently seeing people get held up in the process? Where are you potentially losing customers in that process? And find where those are at and then streamline that. The next one is one that I wanted to throw in because I think it's more important than ever. And that is just be nice. So just be nice when you're dealing with customers and you're talking to somebody who fills out a form on your website, gives you a call to your business, chats with you on your website, be nice. They might be having a horrible day. They might be like really rude to you. Just be nice because what they're going to do is they're going to give you grace in the process. If it takes you a little bit longer to get them an estimate back, or if the work takes a little bit longer than what you expected it to take, they are going to be more tolerant of you if you are nice throughout the process. And the next one, and probably the most important one, is provide clear and actionable instructions. One thing about me, I am I said it earlier, I'm married, I got married in 2020. If my wife doesn't tell me exactly what she wants me to do with clear and actionable instructions, I'm not going to do it, or I'm at least not going to do it right. And so same thing with your customers. Make sure you provide a clear and actionable instruction of what you expect from them. So if you say, hey, why don't you fill out this form, we're going to reach out to you within 24 hours, have an idea of when you might be available for us to come give you a free estimate, making sure those steps are clear, making sure you're asking them what you want them to do, and then giving clear instructions on what that looks like. So that's a big thing to make the process simple. The next up is how do I make sure my brand is recognizable? So with that one, you want to make sure you consistently advertise. So we see this time and time again, where brands stop advertising. They go, oh, I'm good. I've got plenty of business. I'm full for the next six months. I have no more customers to give. My products are on back order, whatever it may be. They stop advertising. Consistently advertise. Even if it's at a small amount, even if you're doing a little bit of advertising, do something. Stay relevant to the customers who are looking for you. Stay in the front of their mind. Be where they're at. The next thing is make sure you have solid branding and then use it. So make sure you have a reason for your brand. Make sure it's not just thrown everywhere and like, oh, we just made this up. We just threw it out there because we wanted to. Understand why you're doing what you're doing when it comes to your brand. Now, a bonus point on that, and you can see it there, is to be strict about this. We see it time and time again where the more people you get into a company and the more freedom people feel that they have to use your brand, there starts to become a little bit of like, watered downness to your brand. It gets watered down as it goes through the process. And maybe the things that somebody's saying about your brand or the colors they're using or the catchphrase that they're using on a social post or marketing that they're doing on your behalf doesn't match up to what your brand is. So make sure you have solid branding and then be sure to use that branding. The next one is know where your customers are and be there too. So this one is pretty straightforward, but understanding where your customers spend their time. Um, when we talk, when we're talking of digital marketing, know what websites they spend their time on, know what social media channels they're using and make sure you're there too. If it's email and you realize your customers are big email users, 
make sure you're doing an email campaign. If you realize that your customers are engaged on certain site or certain sites, make sure you're targeting those sites with your display campaigns. There's a lot of things that you can do, but understanding your customers are, is going to help you be where they're at more often and be in relevant spaces to them when they're making those decisions about who they want to go with. And the last one is just stay engaged with customers. When a customer reaches out to you, stay engaged with them. If it's going to take you a little while to get through the process and get them a, a free quote or get them an estimate or get your product shipped to them. Make sure that you stay engaged with them. Send them an email. Say, hey, here's what the process looks like. Give them a phone call. Um, quickly to, to give an example of that, in my own process, we had our popcorn ceilings scraped. If you have popcorn ceilings, you know how difficult that process can be. As we had our popcorn ceilings scraped, the guy that I worked with consistently called and said, hey, here's an update. We're at this stage. We're going to be done at this time is what we're estimating now. Um, or like when they would leave for the day, hey, we're leaving for the day. There's some stuff that's still out. We left some tools in the corner. If you could just kind of ignore them, that'd be great. So he would consistently update me. He'd stay engaged with me. And then at the end, engage with me by saying, hey, thank you so much for your business. Gave me a card, gave me a, a little piece of banana bread and said, thanks for your business. That engagement has been something that will make me use them again the next time I have the chance to. Um, so making sure you stay engaged with customers. And now the last one here is how do I follow through? So communicate through all steps, kind of like what I just said, make sure any step you're going through, you're communicating with the customer about what the expectation is. So, hey, it's going to be two weeks. Um, we're still looking at two weeks. We'll be here in this date. Um, once it's done, here's what to expect as far as how you take care of it. Um, if it's a product that you're selling, once you get it, here's what you need to do. Um, making sure you're communicating through all steps. And then the next one, provide resources on your site that detail your processes. So one of the best trends that I've been seeing on a lot of websites I've been on lately is having a detailed timeline of what the process looks like for any type of service. Make sure you detail that, make sure you talk about the process, give resources about why you do certain processes. Not only is that gonna help you show up on search engines and rank on Google, it's also going to allow your customers clarity as they go through the process. And then the third one here is to use a CRM to create an efficient customer cycle. So if you don't know what a CRM, is a uh, spoiler alert i'm going to talk about it here in a second but a crm is something that helps you take all of your customer data and work them through the cycle make sure that you're understanding where they're at in a certain process so speaking of crms let's keep going what does a crm do so it organizes your customer data and outreach it allows for automation of common tasks it also creates clarity about where a customer is in the process and provides the tools to enhance your follow-up. So all of those things that we've talked about through those last couple of slides are really going to be easier if you have something like a CRM. Um, our team here at Flypaper, we use a, a CRM called HubSpot. We're actually HubSpot partners and do a lot of work with them. But there's a lot of CRMs out there. There's also a lot of different strategies. A lot of people will use the old method of using spreadsheets. While that's not necessarily maybe as efficient, it's a, it's a method that some people use to follow up. But let me talk to you a little bit more about CRMs. So what does the customer journey look like? So if you were to sit right now and think about your own business's journey, what would it look like for a customer? I'm sure you have a, a situation where you're looking through and you know, okay, these are the steps my customer is going to take. Also, I just saw it pop up in the chat. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. So that's just making sure that you are keeping that relationship, you're managing it through all the stages. That's what CRM stands for. Um, so that customer journey, though, that's going to look like, for instance, this is an ideal customer journey. Somebody that's anonymous goes online, you market to them, whether it's inbound marketing or outbound marketing, you send them certain messages, they become a prospect because they get to your website and they fill out a form. So your marketing team has done their job, they've created a prospect. Then the prospect gets called by a sales team. They get their free estimate. They get their quote. They get that follow-up through emails or through retargeting campaigns or whatever it may be. And then through that stage, the sales team turns that customer or that prospect into a customer. That's the ideal step right there. Then the customer, once they become a customer, needs service. Maybe they have a question, they have concerns. That's where your service team comes in and helps that customer become a promoter who then in turn turns other people towards your business. They help refer other people to what you're doing. So this is an ideal path. And if everything looked like this, there would be no need for CRMs. There would be no need for people like me who talk about them a ton. 
but here is what the process actually normally looks like. So this bottom graph, you can see that's what it normally looks like. An anonymous person goes to your website, downloads an ebook, reads some testimonials, they get a marketing email, they see an ad, and then they finally say, okay, I'm gonna register for the webinar. We get the information, they become a sales qualified lead. Then they maybe visit a blog, they get retargeted, they follow you on Twitter to see what your brand's doing, they do some more things, they go through a blog, yada, 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 and eventually they become a customer in that process. Then once they become a customer, there's an upsell email, there's some support calls, they have a good experience with maybe a certain rep at your team, and then they also talk to a friend about how great you are, and they get to the promoter stage. So if we think, okay, this top, this top graph of marketing, sales, and service unilaterally going through stuff, that'd be the ideal world. Now, in this situation, you can notice marketing, sales, and service touch the client through different stages of this process. So there's parts where marketing's marketing to somebody, and then you see sales kind of trickle in, but the marketing's still marketing to them. And then the sales team comes in and service is helping them with issues and things that arise, but an upsell email would come from probably a salesperson. And so you can see that there's a lot of twistedness and a lot of different things that come into play. That is why a CRM exists, is because it helps you stay organized. So to kind of illustrate that for you, I want to show you what our friends at HubSpot call the flywheel. So you've heard of customer funnels before, you've heard of these. Basically what the flywheel does is it takes that, that customer funnel and just flips it over, looks right into it and says, okay, what does this customer go through? So you're gonna notice this outside ring has the stuff that we already talked about. What are the stages that somebody would go through? Being a stranger, becoming a prospect, becoming a customer, and then becoming a promoter. Now, how do you get somebody through those different stages of the process? That's that next ring, attract, engage, and delight. So you're going to attract people. That's your marketing. That's where your marketing comes in. That's where your remarketing, your emails, your social media, your PPC campaigns, your pay-per-click, your Google ads, all the stuff you're doing falls into that attract stage. Then once you attract somebody, they come to your website, then you need to engage them. That's where maybe there are some more emails. There's some follow-up there. There's a, a sales call. There's a form that somebody fills out so you can understand what they're looking for. You engage them and that stranger goes from a prospect to potentially a customer. Then once somebody becomes a customer, your goal as a company should be to delight them. Make sure the process is efficient. Make sure they get what they're looking for. You're communicating with them well because if you delight a customer through the process, they become a promoter. And then the best part about the flywheel is that if you are doing all those, those things, attracting, engaging, and delighting, those promoters will continue to bring new people to your business while, str while strangers funnel into it, and it'll just keep the circle going. It'll keep going around and around and around, and you'll see growth for your business. So that is kind of why CRMs matter. That's why we really are, are all about it. And I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit more about why we think CRMs in what I like to call story time. So our team at Flypaper for a lot of years did what I talked about earlier and used spreadsheets for everything. So you might be a person who loves Excel. Um, actually, you know what, let's do this. If you are an Excel person and put it in the chat, let me know if you're a, a big Excel person, you love spreadsheets, you love working in them. You can just give me a yes, you can give me a thumbs up, something in the chat to let me know if you love Excel. All right, we're seeing some yeses flow in. And those of you who aren't are like, oh, why are we talking about Excel? So yeah, we're seeing a lot of people flow in with some yeses here. So we also love spreadsheets. We loved using our, our Excel spreadsheets, Google Sheets, different things. Now, the kicker was it wasn't easy for us to share that information. It wasn't easy for us to get it to another rep or get it to the next stage of the process. It also was only as good as whoever was entering the data into the spreadsheet. So if somebody forgot something or if somebody lost track of a spreadsheet, accidentally deleted it off their computer, all of a sudden we don't have that spreadsheet with that customer data on. So a few years ago, we switched over to using a CRM and we still, be honest with you, we have a couple spreadsheets out there still, but we use a CRM to keep all of our customer data and all of our customer interactions easy and accessible. So what it looks like for us, I'm going to kind of quickly talk through the process. For us, what it looks like is we put a company into our system. We put a company in contact in there. That company in contact will live there as long as they stay as our customer, our prospect, or somebody that we want to keep in touch with. That company in contact stays in the system. We can make notes on it. Our sales team can make notes through the sales process. They can keep track of what contracts we have out there. And then once we do get that person to become a customer, 
all of a sudden our support team can come in and support that customer. They can see a full track record of everything we've ever done to that customer. And now here's the best part. I said it early in the call. I'm a marketing person. The marketing team also can go in and utilize all that customer data to do different marketing, to create lists of people we want to market to, to create campaigns that we want to market to certain groups of people and different strategies that we want to take in. And so for us, the CRM took all of our spreadsheets and turned it into a system where sales, marketing, and our service team can all live in harmony and have a big record of data that we will always have. Even if somebody was to move on, I know right now we've been recently talking about the great resignation. I've seen article after article about that. Maybe you have reps leaving your team and there's data that's going with them when they leave on their spreadsheet. The CRM luckily can keep all that data and you won't lose anything that you have. And so for our team, we've seen the benefit. We've been more efficient. We've been able to close more deals. We've been ever able to be more efficient in, in our marketing as well. Any marketing campaign we put out, we have great response to because we know more about the customers we're marketing to. And so we haven't stopped talking about CRMs. We continually talk about it because of the benefit that we've seen. So let's take a, a couple seconds here to recap. So first off, your potential customers are using the internet to find your services and products. I know you're sitting there going like, of course they are, but they're using the internet to find your service and products. And we want to make sure that you show up. So we talked about the tips that you could take to make sure you show up, making sure you have good content, making sure you stay up to date with the recent trends and what's going on within the world that you're trying to market in. Next up is customers are oftentimes judging your credibility based on your online presence. So if you have a good online presence, it's going to help your credibility. Now, here's the other side of the coin. If you have a bad online presence, it could hurt your credibility. So making sure not only is your website on point, that it's very well, well designed, very well created, we keep it simple, we have the right colors, the right brand, also making sure that other places on the internet you have a good presence, making sure you're listed on directories that are important to the customers that you have, making sure you have a social media presence, making sure you're doing some advertising and marketing so your brand stands out. Those are the things that people are judging your credibility on. The next one is staying in the customer circle of consideration gives you the best shot at the business. So when I say staying in somebody's circle of consideration, I mean staying where they're at. That point we talked about, be where your customers are. If you can stay where they're at and you can consistently have your brand there, when it comes time for them to make that purchase, when they're ready to finally make it happen, they're going to thank you your brand because you're there. So making sure you stay in the circle of consideration. And then the last point here is a great way to enhance your follow up and follow through is using a CRM making sure you take it from a spreadsheet that maybe isn't as searchable or maybe isn't as interactive to a tool like a CRM where you can send your emails, you can do your outreach all from in one system and then track that outreach to see the benefit it has on your ROI. So making sure that you're using something to enhance that process and make it more efficient is a huge step. So now I want to kind of just quickly take a second to talk about agencies and why an agency like a flypaper could help. Now, I also want to put a disclaimer. There's a lot of great agencies out there. There's a lot of people who do a lot of great work. Um, and there's a lot of agencies that really put the customer first. We, we believe we are one of those agencies. And so just kind of quickly to talk about us is that we know digital and we know how to utilize it to grow businesses. So whether it's us or a different agency that you wanted to talk to, make sure they know digital and make sure they've utilized it to grow businesses that look like yours. The next thing for us is we focus on local businesses, which allows us to understand where you do business. If you're getting into a relationship with any agency, I hope you ask the question of where are you at? Who do you service? Do you know about my home area? Do you know about Kentucky? Do you know about Louisville? Do you know about the area I'm trying to serve. We do, we work with local businesses. The next thing is we measure everything so that you can have peace of mind. So we have stats galore that we can get to. We have dashboards available to you. And the thing with us is we wanna give that to you so that you know you're getting an ROI, you know what you're doing with us is working. And so we wanna make sure that you have peace of mind through having all the data at your fingertips. The next thing is, our team here believes in what we do so much that we use our own services. So if you see a flypaper campaign, a Facebook campaign, a Google campaign, a display ad, you look at our website, that is created by the same people who work with our customers, the same teams. We go through the same type of, of people and tools and resources because we believe in what we do so much. And the last one is that we understand you're busy. And we work to make things more efficient with you. And this is where I, once again, have a plug to the CRM. We help you get process is automated so that it's easier on you. So that is why our agency 
helps businesses and what we do to help businesses. And like I said, if you use us and you want to use somebody like us, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. But at the same time, there's a lot of good agencies out there. So now I have two paths. This is kind of the choose your own adventure part of my my presentation here. So on the left hand side, if you want to know how your website looks to visitors online, you can scan that code on your screen on the left hand side, and it will take you to a page on our website that has a, a get an estimate form and you can fill that out, you can get what you're looking for, you can see it, you can fill out that form, we'll tell you what your website score looks like. It'll be a cool thing for you to do there. Now, maybe you're like, my website's great. I don't need this. I don't need you to talk about my website. But that CRM stuff you talked about, that does sound pretty interesting. I love Excel, but I'd love to kind of make it more efficient. That's the code on the right. If you scan that, that actually will reach out to a form that comes straight to me. And anything you want to talk about, any questions you have about a CRM, any questions you have really in general, you can go right there. You can contact me. We can find some time to chat. I love doing Zoom calls. Um, as long as I have coffee in hand, I'm good. So we can do that. We can talk about ways that we can help your business through a CRM or maybe just ways that your business might be able to be more efficient using a CRM or some of the tools that we have. Um, so that is that is the end of my presentation. I know we probably want to open it up to some question and answers, right, David? Uh, that is correct, Zach. Um, oops. There we go. So yeah, um, so folks out there, if you just want to put your questions in the chat, I mean, that was a lot of stuff that um, all at once, that was quite the fire hose, Zach, it was awesome. Um, we do have one question already from Noelle, and she says, she asks, where can we go for more information about um, how to define and create great content for our audience? Yeah, so any type of any type of blog any type of places that are creating content so i love looking at where you said your audience too so looking at what kind of business you are so let's say for instance i noel i don't know what type of business you are if you want to put it in the chat i can be more specific but for this example let's say that you are an interior designer looking at blogs and areas that are talking about interior design is going to help you kind of get some ideas and get some brainstorming. But then the understanding your audience is how you take that information and you translate that to your customer. So for instance, I'm a sports person. I love sports, anything sports. So if somebody can take what I'm trying to digest and make it relate to sports in some way, it's going to work for me. So defining your audience and creating great content comes down to understanding what they're into what are they interested in now defining that could come from tracking on your website so there's a lot of tracking that we can do um, there's a lot of tracking that we always do on our sites to understand who those visitors are the other thing is having like this webinar is a great opportunity um, for us we get to see a lot of different business owners that come through so we can understand who's interested in the topics that we're even talking about so finding ways to get people to engage with you so that you understand what kind of people what kind of audience is engaged with what you're talking about so that's kind of how how we would say to define that audience and then create great content for them great answer um so again if you guys have any questions or need to uh this is a great time to really be specific also with your business and the ideas you have, because Zach is the expert. And so why not get a little free advice from an expert while we have him here? So just throw that in the chat. And a couple of folks have uh, raised their hand, but unfortunately I can't, um, I can't let you pop a question like that um, just because of some issues we'd had with some trolls lately, unfortunately. So uh, just type it in the chat and we'll, uh, we will uh, get them answered. So, um, so Zach, you know, business owners, small business owners, especially are super busy, you know, if they have to do almost everything. So they, um, they have to kind of prioritize that their time. And so if you were to, to advise somebody, um, you know, you laid out a lot of great strategies and things to do. So if you were to advise someone that just had a limited amount of time, a little bit limited amount of um, experience in this, where, where would you tell them to start? Yeah, so the number one place I'd tell you to start, and this is my team here knows that I am a broken record on this, but mm -hmm. it's content. So content's gonna be the number one thing, just because if you think about your daily life, the daily things that you're doing, most of us get up in the morning, the first thing we do is we go to social media, we go check our email, we do something where we're just automatically taking in content. So I know for a long time, businesses thought, oh, website's just something I need to have. 
Well, now you need it because you also need that content piece. You need to be able to talk about what you do, finding ways to talk about the businesses, the jobs you've done. A great one is if you have a service-based business, have testimonials, have case studies of how you help somebody, because all of a sudden that content is enjoyable to take in, but also shows me what I can expect. So I would say number one is content. Um, now a bonus side one. If you go with number two, I would say making sure that you have a good a good process, making sure that your process is efficient. Nothing's going to lose more customers than having a process that's like really, really clanky. It doesn't really go through the right space. You jump around to different people. It doesn't feel like you're, you're getting followed up with. That's a good way to lose business. I just recently canceled a service because I didn't ever know who I was going to meet with and who I was going to deal with. So just knowing that that's really important too. Great advice. Y'all are going easy on me with no questions. I'm, I know. I'm Are really, oh, I saw one pop up. So let's see what we got. There we go. Yeah, there's Noel again. Also, where would you rate SEO on your list of priorities? That's yeah, a good question. So, I was actually going to ask that. Great. Yeah, you betcha. So SEO is super high on our, our, our priority list. That's really we like to call ourselves an SEO company that just happens to do a lot of other things as well, because SEO is kind of where everything flows from. And we really like to build good websites. We like to focus on what we're doing website building because a high quality website with high quality content is going to be the huge step in the right direction for SEO. There's a lot of technical things that we can do, but if you said, okay, I have to make an impact this week, create a good website with great content, and you're going to be one huge step towards where you need to be SEO. Then you can layer in the other stuff, the meta tags, the title tags, the HTML elements, all of those, but making sure you have content, once again, broken record, content, 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 content is what's really going to matter. That. But yes, SEO, super high in our strategy. And if you want to talk about it, hit me up, we can talk for sure. Yeah. Um, and then you said, uh, ask a question about a template um, that we can share for content strategy, I would say that really we have a couple that we could do. Um, if you don't mind, Noel, it sounds like you have a lot of really good questions. On that right hand side, that QR code has a place. And basically, the question that I ask on that form is when some good times to meet. I'd love to hop on a Zoom call with you and talk about strategies we use, be more specific on your business, and really kind of give you some, some help there. So that's the that's kind of my a weird answer, but I don't have anything I really share right in this moment. So yeah. Noelle says she will contact you. So on that, on that SEO note, um, I've, I've come across some small businesses that that's all they, they do. They don't have a website. They might have a Facebook page or something like that. What do you feel about just being kind of invested in, in it like that? Mm -hmm. So I would say the number one thing is it's a risky game. So if you're a business owner and you, if you're on this call and you have no website, just, just Facebook, just social media, it's risky because all of a sudden you now your keys are held by somebody else. So if you all of a sudden they decide, hey, we don't want we all of a sudden we're really mad at interior designers like my house doesn't look the way I want it to. Somebody at Facebook's mad at interior designers, your page is blocked. All of a sudden your connection to customers is gone. Um, also, when you partner with somebody like a social media channel you're not just worried about your brand, you're worried about the brand of that social media channel. So if all of a sudden Facebook has some bad press or Instagram has bad press, it's going to come back of, I don't want to use Facebook. I don't trust that they're on that site. So making sure that you understand that when you have a website, you control your message, you control your narrative, and you control the amount of data you get. So mm -hmm. forms on your website, form that you have, that's first party data. It's all stuff that you can look at. I saw another one come up and I'm going to kind of weave two together. So we'll see how well I can do this. Um, but you, somebody, uh, Jacqueline, you said, how do we measure digital strategies aside from surveys? That's going to be measurements. There's a lot of pixels and tracking codes that you can use. Um, if you're not using Google Analytics, I encourage you to look into using Google Analytics, making sure you're tracking conversions. Um, now, once again, because the two things I know how to talk about is content and CRM. If you have a CRM, like I said, we use HubSpot. One of the things you can do on HubSpot is have call to action buttons. You can have forms that you can track all the user forms that come in. You can track all of your traffic analytics like you would on a Google Analytics. So you can track that by putting a simple pixel on your site to see what's working. Um, so that would be number one for me is saying, make sure you're tracking that. The best part is, is that a lot of times customers don't really they don't have to do anything. All they got to do is come to your site and you can track kind of some things that you can get about them. Obviously, data privacy is getting more and more and is getting a little stricter, but you can get a lot of data based off of simple, simple strategies and simple things that you're looking at on your tracking. Awesome. 
Well, looks like that's about all the questions we have. Uh, if somebody wants to jump jump on there real quickly, um, otherwise, um, I think we'll wrap up a little bit early today. Zach, this was great. This was really spectacular. Thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's it. I thought some. Yeah. Okay, that was from Jack. Okay. Yeah, Zach. Uh, thank you so much, and and everybody at Flat Paper and and Waco Media. It's been uh, you guys have been great to work with, and um, I'm I'm really really uh, really impressed with what goes on. So I encourage everyone to reach out to Zach. He's there to help, and he wants to. So take advantage of this resource, Zach. Thank you so much. Yeah. Side note too, if you guys have LinkedIn, you want to follow me on LinkedIn. I'm I'm decently responsive there. If I'm not <laughs> responding. It's because I'm doing a yard project at my house that's built in 1967. Remember, so <laughs> great story and good luck with that. So, oh yes, thank you. All right. All right, everybody, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining today. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see everybody soon. Thank you. Bye.